And not only are we going to be talking about these two very special botanical extracts, but why they can outperform drugs. Yes, I said that. Outperform drugs for arthritis. This is an amazing combination that has a combination of probably about 15,000 scientific studies on these two herbs. And we'll be talking about arthritis. Anything that ends with, ends with itis, I-T-I-S, actually equals inflammatory pain. Arthritis means inflammation of the joints, areas of the body that are most commonly affected by arthritis are those that have a weight-bearing joint. As we put more weight on our joints, and that's why it's so important that we carefully use a diet that maintains a body weight that is in proportion to our body size. That means don't gain too much weight. A little bit of weight, okay. We might need it in an emergency if we have a surgery or if we have some kind of an illness. But when we get to the point where we are grossly overweight or to the point we have obesity, that is putting a tremendous amount of weight on our joints. In fact, it has been calculated that obesity puts 50 pounds of weight on our knees and hips. That's a lot of pressure. Walk around carrying 50 pounds all day and you're not going to be able to survive by the end of the day. You're going to be exhausted, tired, and you're going to be worn out. Now, the most common joints that are affected are spine, knees, hips, and hands. Now, we know that we can replace our knees and hips with artificial joints, but hands and spine, that becomes more difficult. So we aren't going to be able to replace them easily. We haven't gotten to that point yet. We are working on hands, and they have done some new replacement of, of fingers and joints, but we don't do that commonly. So the typical arthritis patient, they avoid stairs because every time you take a step up, ooh, that pain in the joints is terrible. They tend to walk a shorter distance. They pick things off the floor and opening jars. Oh, not very, not very often. They like to avoid that. You can't find people that older people cannot open up a jar. They just don't have the strength to open up a jar of pickles or a jar of jam. Uh, and also they, they, they just don't have the, too much pain. They just want to avoid that. They have problems sleeping. When they go to bed at night, they have so much pain, they just can't fall asleep. And really, when you can't fall asleep, what happens? You get stressed out, and stress is a big factor in causing inflammatory properties. So you don't want to have a sleepless night, causing more inflammation, causing more itis or arthritis, or they tend to sit in one position for a very long time they have a hard problem with that. Now the common solution by most people is using acetaminophen, otherwise known as Tylenol, to stop the pain. Well, a recent study found that the number one way that older adults treat pain is with the use of acetaminophen. Now 51% of people surveyed the common people that buy acetaminophen, and they buy it because, first of all, they think it's safe. Why not? It doesn't require a prescription. And I know that drugs that are dangerous or that have to be monitored by my physician come with a prescription. So I can go into any convenience store, gas station, or wherever, drug store, and I can buy my acetaminophen, also known as Tylenol. I can buy it off the shelf. So that means, hey, it must be pretty safe. The FDA hasn't taken very, a very cautious stand on acetaminophen. If I can go in and buy the biggest bottle I want or 10 bottles if I want, and I don't, you know, they don't caution me too much about how much I take every day, so it must be okay. 
So 51% of people surveyed did not know that there are safety issues associated with the use of acetaminophen. Now, conventional pain relief for chronic arthritis pain. This is a study with acetaminophen, Tylenol. A recent study found that the number one way that older adults treat pain is with the use of Tylenol. 51% of people surveyed did not know that there were safety issues associated with the use of acetaminophen. Now, this is not something coming from, from my opinion. This actually is a study. So it isn't something that I just think, well, we have to be careful. I always think we should be careful with any drug, whether it's over-the-counter or prescription. But this is not something that I dreamed up. This is a study that's telling you something to be cautious about. The number one cause... Remember, the number one cause, we're not talking about street drugs. We're, talking about, we're not talking about heroin or, or cocaine or, or some of the other drugs that, that people might take. They're illegally sold, but they're taking them to get a high or taking them for some other reason. But the number one cause of Tylenol, Tylenol, that you think is safe, is the number one cause of acute liver failure. Acetamid and acetaminophen does nothing, absolutely nothing, to stop inflammation, which is the cause of pain. In a meta-analysis, that means we're not looking at just one study. We're looking at 74 studies in this case. And what they do is they look at 74 studies, and they try to determine what each one of those studies represents, and then they come to a conclusion based on 74 clinical trials, including 59,000 patients with arthritis of the hips and knees, and researchers found that acetaminophen was not effective, was not effective in reducing pain. Researchers cautioned that people using acetaminophen for pain relief and not getting results, will try to increase the dosage, thinking they need more, which significantly increases the risk of liver damage. And in addition to liver damage, long-term use of acetaminophen has also been associated with kidney damage. And in fact, we just found recently that kidney damage, kidney cancer, liver cancer, have all skyrocketed in the last several decades. Why? We are using more and more drugs because more and more people have inflammatory knees and joints. It increases the risk of heart disease, gastrointestinal problems. Acetaminophen reduces fevers, does nothing to stop inflammation. And really, acetaminophen, you can buy liquid. You can even buy it for children. This is a very, very dangerous drug. And I would caution, talk to your doctor. Before you use something over the counter, talk to your doctor. Talk to your pharmacist. Get more information. Relieve pain and inflammation the natural way. Why not? If there, is proven, if there are proven ways to use natural botanicals, like curcumin and boswellia, and there is proven evidence that they will actually reduce inflammatory pain in joints like knees and hips. Why not try that first? Why not that to be your first line of defense? Try it. And then if you don't get results, you can always resort to using something over the counter or talking to your doctor. I, I always advise talk to your doctor first. If you try something natural, there are no side effects, so you don't have to fear something's going to happen and there, it would be dangerous. And in a week or two or three, if you don't get results, go see your doctor. But curcumin and boswellia can facilitate healing of the joint structure by helping to reduce inflammation in the joint safely and effectively. Curcumin protects chondrocytes, especially cells, they are specialized cells, within our joint cartilage from being degraded 
and Boswellia can do the same. And you know when you take drugs like acetaminophen over in time, it actually destroys more joint cartilage. Curcumin and Boswellia help to improve mood and elevate pain. And for joint pain, actually the best thing to do is try a combination. I love this combination. Curcumin, Boswellia, DLPA, and natokinase. Now here you have four different ingredients. I would look for a, some kind of a, a package or a formulation or some whatever. Of these four ingredients, because each one of these four ingredients becomes a family, because they work together synergistically to make them more effective. In fact, in recent research at Baylor University, they found that curcumin works and Boswellia works, but when you put them together, they're far more effective in a combination, and they, fi they find that actually more Boswellia makes curcumin more effective. So this happens, what, this is called a, a synergistic effect. You put, you put some numbers together and you get a bigger outcome. So targeting arthritis with curcumin and Boswellia. You know, we have pathways in our body that are uh, in the cause of inflammation. We have the COX-2, the COX-1, the five lux pathway. These are all made and they should be in balance with each other. And what happens is when we have an, when we have an overexpressed pathway, whether it's COX-2 or five lux or COX-1, then we're going to have uh, a imbalance of these pathways and that's when we have inflammation. So the primary ones we really want to be concerned with are the COX-2 and the 5 lux. But curcumin works on all three, but more effectively on COX-2, but also a little bit on COX-1 and a little bit on the 5 lux. But when you put them together, you have a combination of having effect on all three of these very specialized pathways that help to reduce, you know, if you increase the prostaglandins or you increase the leukotrienes and you have an overexpressed pathway, that means your body's out of balance, it's not in harmony. Now they've used drugs to try to reduce these pathways down to a normal level of, because we can't live without leukotrienes, we can't live without prostaglandins, we can't live without these pathways but we don't want to kill these pathways or damage these pathways, but that's what drugs do. Drugs are so strong and they're so potent that what they do is actually they block the effectiveness of the pathways than just downgrading them. We want to downgrade them. We want to modulate those pathways. We want to bring them down into a balance. Remember years ago, I don't know if you recall, the, the drug called Biox, Biox was hailed by the medical community that this was the end of arthritis. This was the end of pain because Biox worked so effectively, and it did. It really did stop pain. It stopped arthritis. But what it did was it killed off the pathways so effectively that there was no pain. There was no arthritis. It was gone. But if you kill them off, you cause consequences in other indications because they found that there was more heart disease, heart attacks, clots, strokes. And with Biox, there were 37,000 deaths attributed to the use of Biox, and that was even too many for the FDA to look away. They then put their foot down and they banned Biox. 37,000 people died from that drug alone. But when you look at curcumin and Boswellia, they balance the pathways and downgrade the pathways with no side effects, and you keep everything in check and balanced. Now, in the COX-1 pathway, you have abnormal platelet aggregation. That means you're getting bleeding. Your stomach lining bleeds. That means that there's going to be alteration. That's going to be complications. The COX-2 is an inflammation, uh, atherosclerosis, arthritis, joint issues. And in the five locks, you have leukotrienes, which are involved with the lungs, 
but also as an anti-inflammatory. So it also works on asthma, COPD, inflammatory bowel disease, gout, psoriasis, and it interferes with the cancer cell death. This is a very, very powerful package. Curcumin and Boswellia are uh, a, a combination that was made, I guess I would say made in heaven, because it, they work so effectively. Curcumin decreases the inflammatory compounds from COX-2, the pathway. Boswellia decreases the inflammatory compounds from the 5 Lux pathway, which both are the leading cause of arthritis. In fact, there is no drug yet today that has been developed successfully and effectively to downgrade the 5 Lux pathway. That, and all the drugs that are trying to have some major side effects. Some of the drugs for asthma and COPD, yes, they have some effect, but if you look at the side effects, the side effects of the drugs that are prescribed for asthma and COPD, the last two always catch my attention when they talk about these drugs being advertised on TV for asthma and COPD. They say be cautious because they give you the whole list of side effects, but the last two may cause cancer or death. Now, those are some pretty, pretty serious side effects that what's, why is it worth it? So why isn't it better to try curcumin and Boswellia together, which relieve joint pain better than prescription drugs? Here's a good clinical study involving patients diagnosed with arthritis, osteoarthritis of the knee. Group one, that means they take a number of people and they divide them up into different groups. So group one, they took the blend of curcumin enhanced with turmeric essential oil and Boswellia, which has a very uniquely tenderized combination, which gives you a high level of AKBA, which is the most active component of Boswellia. It has a very, very reduced level of the beta boswellic acids. And given to these patients in the study, 500 milligrams twice daily of this combination of curcumin and Boswellia. COX-2, excuse me, I shouldn't say that, Celebrex, I'm sorry, Celebrex, if they gave the other group 100 milligrams of Celebrex twice a day, so they have one group taking the herbs, one group taking a known drug, prescription drug, one that is advertised heavily on TV, one of the most common drugs prescribed for arthritis, 100 milligrams twice a day. The study lasted for 12 weeks. So what was the outcome after 12 weeks? Well, the percentage of improvement from baseline to study end. The herbal group, that was, that was the combination of the two herbs, the curcumin and boswellia, improved 57% versus 21% to the drug group. Quite a big reduction of joint pain. The herbal group, in the joint line tenderness, the herbal group improved 78% versus 57% for the drug group. And then the combination of the herbal group improved 71% versus 57% of the drug group for walking distance. So the herbal group could walk further, walk with less pain, more flexibility, more mobility. So in other words, the curcumin Boswellia group had better results and with fewer side effects. And mostly the side effects are an upset stomach, maybe, maybe once in a blue moon, it could be diarrhea, but they were not lasting side effects. When you stop taking the herbal combination, the side effects are gone. But when you take a drug, the side effects are so severe that they have lasting effects and sometimes more, in fact, actually causing more disease, talking about cancer and death as side effects. And then plus that, the study end, 64% of the people in the herbal group versus 29%, twice as much of the herbal group improved over the drug group so much more, they moved from moderate to severe arthritis to mild to moderate arthritis. A huge change. 
in favor of the herbal group. Curcumin for rheumatoid arthritis. This is an autoimmune disease, different than osteoarthritis, which is coming from the wear and tear kind of disease, where we wear out our joints over time. Age, but the more stress we put on our joints by being overweight, by being obese, we wear out our joints. This is come, the rheumatoid, we can be painful everywhere. 45 patients with RA, rheumatoid arthritis. Curcumin enhanced with turmeric essential oils. This combination, 500 milligrams twice daily against a drug called diclofenac sodium, which one brand name is called Volterin. And that was at a 50 milligram dosage twice daily. And then they did a third group of the patients where they combined the herb curcumin with the drug, taking them together. And why is that important? Well, first of all, if you're on diclofenac, I'm not going to tell you to go off of it. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a physician. I'm not going to tell you stop taking your drug. If you're working with your doctor, that's what you should be doing if that's what you want, that you have freedom of choice. But that's, this means that you can take curcumin with your drug. That's a nice thing to know. Many doctors will tell you that, no, no, if you're taking this drug, don't take curcumin. Don't take another herb. Don't do this. But here we're proving more and more over the scientific studies that when you take an herb of some kind, not everyone, I'm not going to take, broadcast this as every, every herb you take, but we are classifying some herbal compounds have more effect on the medication reducing the side effects, reducing the to toxicity of the drug, and making the drug more effective. So this, in this case, curcumin plus diclofenac plus the drug, 500 milligrams of curcumin, and 50 milligrams twice a day. Take them together. The goal was to obtain a significant reduction in the disease activity score. So combines different, this, this score combines different measurements of the RA disease activity into a single index of tender joints, swollen joints, and general health assessment. The study lasted eight weeks. So at the end of the study, into the curcumin group, 44% effectiveness. In the diclofenac group, 42%. So the curcumin outperformed diclofenac. In the curcumin diclofenac sodium combination, it was 44. So almost exactly the same. 44, 42, 44 didn't make much difference. But here's the big difference. 14% of the patients that, in, that were in the drug group, they dropped out. They dropped out of the study. They quit. And this study was only eight weeks. They quit. Why? Because they had adverse events. Now, adverse events are serious events. They're not side effects. They're really serious. That means they had to go to the hospital. That means they had to go to the emergency ward. That means they had to have a doctor's care. So taking drugs, you know, you're kind of rolling the dice. You are taking some very, very, very major risks when you take drugs. Always keep that in mind. I'm not against drugs because I think drugs can be very valuable in an emergency, in an accident, or an injury. You don't want to be hit by a car and wish somebody would give you some curcumin. You want a drug. Drugs are life-saving. So drugs have their place, but we have come to depend on drugs for every little major ache and pain. And I can, I can list off 25 or 30 natural compounds that outperform drugs, and the science is there. Now, in the herb uh, or curcumin that was given in the RA study or the rheumatoid arthritis study, zero of the patients withdrew from the curcumin group due to any, any kind of side effects or adverse events. So not only are these almost being matched in terms of the benefits, 
But the huge benefits are you don't have any adverse effects. You don't have any major side effects that you have to be worried about. So now how do you choose the best when you're shopping? How do you know what to shop for? How do you know which one to choose for? It's a nightmare out there. There are thousands of Boswellias out there. There are thousands of curcumin products out on the shelf. They are on the website. They're on the Internet. They're all over the place, and there are all different price ranges. And if you are commonly shopping by price, you're going to get into trouble because the lowest, you know, the lowest price product is there for a reason. It's because it is because it is the lowest price product because it's the lowest quality of product. So here's a, here's a little bit of advice I would give. Look for a curcumin enhance. That means it helps to increase absorption. Curcumin is, is, is not very easily absorbed. Because it's fat soluble, it's harder to be absorbed out of the intestinal tract through the membrane of the intestinal tract into the bloodstream so that it circulates throughout the body, gets to all this, the joints and the cellular structure. So there are ways to increase absorption. And from all the studies I've seen, the most effective and the least harmful is to mix turmeric essential oil with tumorones, which are compounds very, very similar in effect as curcumin. So you're getting better benefits. You're getting additional bonuses because not only are you getting the turmeric essential oil, but it has a very high concentration of what is called AR tumorones, and these are very similar in effect as curcumin. So you want to make sure your curcumin is bound to turmeric essential oil. This is a highly studied, there are, there are over 50 studies on the combination of curcumin and essential oil. The curcumin should contain all three curcuminoids. And a clinically studied curcumin proving that the benefits are ethical in humans. There are more human studies done on this form of curcumin enhanced with turmeric essential oil than any other form of curcumin. Then look for the Boswellia. <clears throat> look for a standardized Boswellia extract that contains up to 10% AKBA. I wouldn't go beyond 10%. Many manufacturers have gone up to 30% to 80%, even up to high as 90%. Well, you, don't, you no longer have a Boswellia. You have isolated AKBA, and you have taken the, the, the parts of Boswellia. You, you actually have torn them apart. You tore the, the herb apart, and you have only taken one little tiny fraction out of it. And that's not going to be – it's not a full spectrum anymore. It's not an herb anymore. And now you have gone to almost a synthetic compound. So 10% keeps it in its natural form. That's, and that is up to 10 times more than all other forms of curcumin, excuse me, of Boswellia. 10 times more of this key compound than standard, unstandardized AKBA or unstandard, unstandardized Boswellia. It's usually 1% to 2% AKBA in unstandardized Boswellia. And then beta Boswellic acid, that's an interesting compound, and I don't know why nature did this, who knows. But Boswellia contains a pro-inflammatory compound. That means it could cause inflammation, and that's known as beta Boswellic acid. So you look for one that has less than 5% of this pro-inflammatory compound known as beta Boswellic acid and make sure that it's clinically studied. You have to always check that to make sure. So now stop arthritis pain. How do you stop it? Combined curcumin, Boswellia, <clears throat> devil's claw for relief of, of, of uh, arthritis pain. Reduces inflammation, increases joint lubrication, and stops arthritis pain. In fact, the devil's claw increases the synovial fluid, increases the lubrication, increases the hyaluronic acid in the joints that causes the lubrication up to almost 50%. So about 800 milligrams 
of this combination daily would be extremely helpful to reduce the effects of arthritis, to improve the joint structure and function of your joints, and then also to reduce any other kind of inflammatory process. So I'm going to turn it back over to Cheryl and let Cheryl wrap up the program. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you so much, Terry, for that very informative presentation. Uh, folks, if you would like to ask any questions about this presentation or any of your health questions to Terry Lemeron, uh, please visit us at terrytalksnutrition.com. And you'll notice on the page in the uh, sort of in the upper left-hand corner where it says Terry Connects, just pick that. You'll have a drop-down list of actions you can select. You can review Terry's articles, read his blog, blog or his uh, e-newsletter archive, listen to his radio show, lots and lots of different choices. But there's also a Just Ask Terry. Click that link and you will have a direct connection that you can ask your questions of Terry Lemerand. So thank you all for taking time out of your busy day to learn more about natural interventions for health. We hope you'll join us again for another Terry Talks Nutrition educational webinar. And until we meet again, good health to you. Bye-bye. <laughs>